And it is hard to strive for something that you don't uh, have the enough motivation to do. Uh, in order for a person to strive really for something, or to, to go against the odds, or to be aware of the distractions and don't fall for it, they, they have to be determined and they have decided to go a certain direction. So they would recognize distractions so that they would not fall for it. They would also uh, go over the obstacles because if we're not determined, if we don't know exactly where we're going, the first obstacle we're just going to fall to the wall and we're not going to be able to continue. The first distraction, we will be not able to recognize it uh, or fall for it as, as if it were a good thing. Because this is what distractions are. They think that we seem good at the first glance, but in fact, they are deviations, they are distractions. So, we need the determination, uh, we need the foundation. And in order to build these two, we uh, we need to, to build the person, build the individual first, and then the family, and then the communities, the Sajid, and the Islamic schools, uh, and the community at large. And we're far from it. I mean, there are, there is the material. The material is there, and there is the people that are, that are thirsty and hungry for this. There are plenty of things to work with. It, it is just that needed to be uh, directed in the right direction, somebody to commit the effort and make the, the, the collective work together in order to make, to come up with results, to advance, to go a step forward. Otherwise, if we just do what we have been doing, it will just keep the status quo and not even that we're going to lose that status quo. Because the people who are coming against this DAO are not doing it randomly like they are. They are planning it and they are, you know, they know what they're up against and they're doing it. Uh, I don't want to say it's right, it's, of course, it's a wrong thing to do, but they know what they do. The Quran, when it was revealed, we need to, to reflect on, on, on this too, because I want to come to the point of the tarbiyah, of, of preparation, of training, and education of the foundation of the, the community Dao. Uh, the, and we talk about this in terms of the Quran, the Aqidah, the Fiqh, the Nasirah, and the The Quran was revealed over 23 years. The first ayah revealed to Prophet Muhammad when he was 40, and the last ayah revealed to him when he was 63. From Allah. Say so Allah. So the Quran was revealed. So look back at, at, at Musa. Musa was given the Torah, and the Torah was a holy book. It was a book of law, a book of, book of reflection, and it was a revelation of the word of Allah Taala also. And, and it's significant. It was a significant book before the, the people of uh, the book and Kitab. They started to take things out of it or add things to it or, or out of things in it. It, it, it is a great uh, revelation. It's a book of Allah Taala. Allah Taala actually indicates that in the Quran by calling it Ahlul Kitab, the people of the books. So they do have it. But the book of Musa, السلام, how was it revealed? Was it revealed over time by the Quran? No, Allah Taala said, "Wa'adna Musa, Allah Taala said, 'Wa'adna Musa, 
وتم ميقاته رقمي 40 ليله. So Allah تبارك وتعالى has invited those to the top of the mountain and he handed him the book. The book was came down a hard copy, printed, and read it. At once, the whole book, everything. So when we reflect over, over this, we see that the, 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 the contract and the reflection, the contraction between these two. You see that the Quran was revealed over 23 years and the Torah was given at once, printed out already in a book. So Al Quran is not like a stool, it's, it's not only um, a book of guidance. Because if it was, Allah would have just handed the Quran to Muhammad Sallallahu the same way he gave it to Musa. So the Quran is a book of tarbih, training and education over time. And, 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 and then making a person a da'iyah to Allah, making a person from being an ordinary person to become a person who is, is, is inviting people to the way of Allah, the way of the the way of the truth. It's a process. You cannot bring someone and say, okay, you are Muslim and you're obligated to be a da'wah, you are the messenger of the messenger of Allah. There is a messenger of Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, and every Muslim henceforth is a messenger of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. That's why he's the last messenger, because he says, I'm now not to tell you that he said. So the people of the Dawah, people who spread the knowledge of Islam after me, we stand in the place of the prophets that came into children of Israel, Bani Israel after Yaqub alayhi salam. So, uh, there are no more prophets because the message is carried by us. And I'm hearing this. Hear me out, so it's, it's carried by us. There are more, more, no more messengers, no more prophets because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has relied on us to do the, 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 the job of the prophet, the job of the messenger. Again, us. Because who else will do it? Okay, no more prophets, no more messengers. And people are getting farther and farther away from Allah. Whose responsibility is it? So, and, and don't tell me that the responsibility of the shaykhs because, you know, the shares numbers are going down, and also the shares qualities are going down by the time. And we, what is the shares? What is the shares? The people who are, who are community leaders, Muslim leaders, are they imported from somewhere? Is there like a, a, a house of, 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 of hatching house that hatches out shares? Or is there a factory that makes shares? They're from us. And we have to be a, a good, fertile land to produce such individuals. That's another big topic that we should talk about, to produce such individuals that would lead the community. We have to come from amongst them. We have one of them. Otherwise, it would, it, it, would not, it would be the purpose of it. If you bring somebody who is not for what is he doing? So it has to be one of the community. It has to be one of the one. And we, therefore, are obligated to prepare the environment, the fertile land, to grow such shit because it's a very long process and it's a hard process and a lifetime process. No one memorizes the whole Quran overnight or a week or a year. No one knows all the hadith and the seerah and the seerah. No one would be able to 
can lead a community correctly according to the book and the sunnah unless there ha he has been through a lifetime of education. When people say, oh, people go to medical school for eight years, forget that. You need 20 years to be like somebody who really knows what, how, how to, to give fatwa or to, or to make an opinion about something. You need to learn all the Quran, all the hadith, everything that happened. What Imam Muhammad said, and what Imam Ahmad said, and what Imam Malik said, and what Imam Shafi said, and what all the students said, scientifically or, or, or according to the, the, the rules of research that I read upon from anyone who has done any research in, 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 in any subject in the old time or in, or in the recent time, in order for you to be able to give an opinion about certain literature, you have to read the literature. <clears throat> so, in order for Imam to qualify, he has to know every literature that is being written. He not not every literature, because there's some things that you don't have to do, but the, the, the significant one, like everything. Because Imam Abu Hanifa did not write his, his, his letter, uh, it's his students who, who wrote uh, Abu Yusuf, uh, Ibrahim, and Abu Yusuf Yaqub ibn Ibrahim. These two, these are the ones who recorded the Imam Abu Hanifa. Because Abu Hanifa was in law, he was busy doing halakha. After French, he's always halakha. And then after he's done with the halakha after French, he has a business. He had he used to buy and sell things and he was working families. And he was good at it. I mean, the good merchant. And, uh, and then he would go home, have lunch, and, and, and take a nap. And after Asr, he would sit in the messages again, answering uh, uh, questions and giving fatwas until, uh, until after Asha. So he did not have any time to write anything. <clears throat> he is the one Imam amongst all the four Imams who did not write his own book. It was his students who wrote it. And mashallah, they were uh, very well heritage and legacy for him. So the point is, we need to produce the, uh, if we want to do the collective community da'wah, we cannot do it randomly. And it's not going to happen again. This is not how it happened for the first time when the Prophet and the Sahaba did it. It didn't happen randomly. And every time there has been a, a, a rising of Islam in any land, it has to be deliberate and it has to be directed, it has to be planned, it has to be worked correctly. You want to uh, throw the, 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 uh, the seeds in the land and forget about him and come in the end of the season and harvest it? Doesn't work like that. You have to break the land, you have to organize it, you have to protect it from the bad weeds, you have to put the seeds in places in a organized way, and you have to keep the irrigation, the water from the seed in certain ways, and keep it from being so too dry or too wet or too dry in order for it to come at some time. And then if bugs come around, you need to fight the, 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 the worms or the bugs or whatever infection comes, you need to look after it so you can have a harvest. So people who want Islam to spread and Dawa to grow without doing the intentional, deliberate, planned, well planned, organized work are the ones who dream in the, the fallah or the, or the, or the farmer who is deeming to, to, to just throw the seeds and come in the season and to make the harvest. It's going to happen. 
So we need to do the community down. When the Prophet ﷺ started his da'wah, it's not that the, the best way of da'wah is to make a, 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 a community, a model community that people can see and see functioning and working and see these people have sort of how we want to be these people. We can talk to an individual and convince him. I mean, and we can make a role model by ourselves as individuals and people see us and say, but mashallah, he's in akhlaq, he's in manners. What is he, he's a Muslim. Oh, what is this time talking about? And then people read and we see comforts, mashallah, alhamdulillah. But then we get one every once in a while. When the Prophet sallallahu established the role model community, people entered Islam by the nation. Like the Persians who were entered Islam. Here, this thing, here's the Persian, an entire culture of speaking an entire language. I mean, the tribe of so and so, which is made of thousands and thousands of people, entered this land. A country like uh, Syria, that we were, were taken by the Romans at the time, they entered this land. So when you have da'wah, that is now made by a community, then you get as a big of an impact. But if you just do the dawah and in that simple understanding of trying to bring a conflict every once in a while, we're gonna die out. You just do the math. It's mathematically it is a small the, the, the statistics say that more than half of our children are not going to be Muslim. And only 10% of our grandchildren are going to be Muslim. Is this true? I, I, I hate to believe it, but they say they, they did the study. So it's going to take another couple of generations. It's not going to be like a thousand years later, another 50 years, and we're out. And these mosques are going to be sold and made stable or something, or a storage area or something. So we're not going to leave behind enough Muslims to, to keep them. Or even if we do, they are not educated enough to keep them. And if we educate them, they're not motivated enough, they're not generous enough to donate the money to keep it. Because properties are getting more and more and more expensive. So people are getting less motivated to pay, while the properties are getting more expensive. So where are we? <clears throat> so the main point is, we need to create the environment to produce Muslim leaders who will be able to bring the community together so we can do a community down instead of the individual. That's the model. Number two, the, the, the common gene the youth. Our kids are in college now all the way to high school. They're not all the same, but they, they, we have to give them all attention. How many Muslims do you know that have a kid who went to college and then she took off hijab? Or she went out with a, a big six feet white guy, or black for that matter, it doesn't matter. How many people do you know that has a kid who, who have went to college and then he, his name was Muhammad, but now he has a computer in his ear and he's called Mo? I mean, these are indications. These are not just individual things that we know. These are things that are happening before our eyes. And we, because we hate to think of where this is going, then we block it, we don't think about it. But allow yourself to think about where is this going? What is this an indication of? 
the generation that is coming, <coughs> my dear brother and sister, can be a carrying a, a generation that carries Islam, or can be a generation that fails. Let it drop. To drop the ball, ball. That's the two options, right? Okay, the question now is who is it up to to decide which direction this generation is going? The question that we need to ask is who is it up to that this generation will go either way? Be a, a, a strong generation of good Muslim people who carry the message and keep the dawah going and keep the messages established for a generation that is just get caught up with the life and then everyone of them he marries and she he marries a, a, a non Muslim and she marries a non Muslim guy and then the, the children he has no idea. I mean, a grandchild of a very big shape. I'm not going to mention his name here in the United States. I mean, the, 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 the sheikh is old, but she, the kid is, is, is in high school. And she's going out with guys and dating and all that. And, and then he, he's trying to talk to her. And he's like, Grandpa, I love you. I respect you. I respect you where you come from. I respect your culture. But you, you know, it's, it's very hard to force me to just be like you because this is what you like. Simple. And she makes sense, doesn't she? I mean, according to the culture here, she does make sense. I mean, you're not going to force me to be Muslim because this is what you are, or this is what you come from. This is America, Grandpa. And therefore, you send a woman. She said something like that. I mean, he couldn't say anything because it's too late. She was not taught when she was at the time of reception, of receiving education, the time of receiving who is she and who is supposed to be, we were distracted to start to teach them or give them good education and make them doctor and make them engineers and make them lawyers and make them something good so that they can spend their feet and be able to sustain family. But what about sustaining? Our team. Where is the priority for this? Going back to the Quran example, it takes time. The Quran example is that the Quran will reveal over time. It's a process, it's got to be, it's training. You cannot have a child, feed them, and keep them happy, and give them good education. To college and they are, they are and ready to go out in the world because like, oh remember we're Muslim. Oh yeah, of course I did. And then if you move to different state, is that oh, over? <clears throat> so we also for for our children we need to simplify things a little bit because our kids <coughs> They're not going to come to us and say, uh, we did not come into the mansion because one goes one to the other. And even if they say that, they will make up something. They just don't want to. But the street real reason we did not come is they're not interested. Or there's something that is pushing them away. Two brothers arguing about whether to put your hands on the top of the belly button or under the belly button because this is the monkey and this is the hamdali. Can a ball of kid and the kid which is what can make sense of it? And, and he doesn't want to come to the message anymore. Or, and then he would just. Either hiding away or running away or telling you what's But he's not going to tell you I'm not coming to the message because of the argument. 
So we have to do so for the end. We have to be careful what we say and what we do. The concept, we catch it, we get it. And we build ideas and we make decisions. Don't think that you're too young and you're not. We all, three years old and five years old, we make decisions about things regarding their parents at that age. It's, it's science, it's psychology, it's not something that I'm making up. Anyone who started studying the psychology of children, they know. When you are too young, they make decisions, they build ideas about the environment, of who they are, of who they want to be. At faith, by the time of 12, they've already made a final decision. It's too late. Unless it's a, there's a, some very strong convincing event that would make them change their mind. But by the time of 12, according to science, they already made their final decision what they're going to be. I mean, if they are going to do this or that, but they still have to act like that in the house, it's potential. They're pretending until they have the freedom and then they will be what they decided to be when they were 12 or 13 or 14. Sometimes they go all the way to 16, but that's it. <clears throat> but we're too busy with the kids at that age. We're too busy trying to make money and go to uh, have a nice quality life and have college. A lot of kids, they don't know how to pray. <clears throat> and if they don't know, if they know how to pray, they don't know anything about the kids. They can't pray. And if they don't know, I mean, adults now here, they don't know about the kids. You know, the cat, out of the book, on the law, after the prophet, so I can die. There is a huge portion of wisdom by the thousands. They made up a big army and they decided they are going to be very dangerous in that way. No, I'm going to pull up and I'm not going to take the cat. You know what I was going to do? He built an army and he fought them. And he said, We pay the cat or I'll kill them. They fought. Our children doesn't know me. They think the cat is being generous, being kind. It's like the, 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 the concept of charity in English in this culture. And if they know that, they, they don't know. Okay, I have this very nice, a funny story about a guy, Muslim kid. Okay. And uh, he, I had to move to a different state to go to college. And it happened to, to be roommate with one of another college kid that I know. And this kid is the one who is responsible for this story. I don't know, I was not there, but I believe it. He said that he went to the dairy factory in the mountain, in Ramadan, I mean, in Boston, that is in Boston area. So he went out to pray for the commission in the Ramadan day and came back at, at, at like six, seven o'clock in the morning. And his friend Muhammad, who's saying that he is fasting, he's sitting there eating. And he said, What you doing? And she looked at him and said, Okay, I'm just going to I'm just going to fast. He said, What you doing? And he said, I'm going to fast. He said, Okay, I'll have my time, my two hours of the night. So he made himself a fat one. He delayed the support and delayed the iftar and shift to Madan. The, the kid is good and he wants to do that ibadah and he wants to fast, but he doesn't know how. <coughs> we don't teach our kids. I mean, if we are in a community that when kids go to college, we have to blend them, know what boys are doing. All that, but they should know where the limits are, even though there are circumstances that would force them to break these limits. But the limits should not be vague in their heads, 
So breaking the limit, because you must, if there's a necessity, is one thing, and not knowing where the limits are is another. So even though we see that the, the practical situation is that they, they break the limit, we still have to tell them where the limits are, where the lines, where you draw the lines is very important. We know where the lines are. We have to know. So I'm, I'm talking about the, 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 the education of the kids in Ibadat, but I also have need to mention that telling our children about the answers of these academic questions. The, the explanation of the questions of the, the, the non Muslims like to attack Islam, like the polygamy, like the Prophet married a child, like this and this and that, like women oppression, like all these things that we are keeping, like terrorists, like jihad. These kids, they confront these words every day at school, whether they tell you or not not only in college, but in high school and middle school and probably elementary school. These kids are being bullied by jihad, by Latin, by this, by that. And the kids don't know what to say. And then what, what happens? What happens in, in this, this kid back at the head? What do you think happens? He thinks his family is doing something horrible. <clears throat> Whether you like to think it that way or not, he thinks that these people who came from the Middle East, they are violent, and they have polygamy, and they do oppress the world, and they do this. Our own kid, not the kid of the Prophet, our own kid, they believe this about Islam, and then they pretend that they're fine with it, and as long as they live with you, but as soon as they move out and they grow up, they go and become what they have decided to be back then. So we're all of teaching our kids the answers to this question. The fact that, I mean, that the question when they say that the Prophet Aisha, which is a child of Allah, a guy from Azhar, he, he did a very authenticated study that proved beyond doubt that she was at least 16 by calculation, by math, no math. Like when Abu Bakr was this, he was that age. And when he was married, he was that age. So Aisha could have had been him that age when she. So he, I, I read the whole thing, but I don't remember all the details. But when you read it, it's a proof. It's a research that proved that that was a lie. It never happened. She was somewhere between 14 and 17 or 18. He did not get a precise time, but she could never be ever at all younger than 14. She was not. It's just a lie. So, and, and that was normal at this time. Every uh, woman, as soon as they have their head, they don't need to get married. You didn't have to be 35 to get married like this. Now, now, as soon as the, 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 the girl is, is, is uh, formed to ready to have babies, they, why would they keep that? Back then in the time, as soon as the kid is ready, Omar ibn Khattab was married when he was 11. You see, we know how we know that because we know that the difference between Umar ibn Khattab and his son Hassan, his oldest, is 10, 12 years. Umar ibn Khattab and his son, when they walked together, they thought they were brothers. Because Umar ibn Khattab was only 12 years old. And so it was worked both ways. It's not only the girls that married the sins, but really the boys too. Because the, 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 the thing that was the, the trend back then is, is that we need to have the tribe to be as big a number as possible because the tribe, the smaller tribes and the weaker tribes are attacked by the, the stronger and bigger tribes and, and, and they lose. They lose the wealth, they lose the land, they lose the water, they lose the sheep, 
the concept to heal. So in order for them to get greater and greater numbers as soon as anyone is ready to produce white people. So when a girl marries at 14, she's probably going to wait. I mean, if, if any of you know the Batman's of so in the Muslim world, you do the same thing. Why go too far? Go to the Midwest here in the United States. Do the same thing. Utah. They, they marry girls at 11 and 12 all the time. But they like to uh, accuse us. So we need to be able to answer these questions to our kids, even though if they don't have. Because they just keep it inside, they are oppressed about it, they are bullied about it, and they are ashamed of it, but they don't talk about it. We need to give them the shield, we need to give them the, 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 the instrument to defend themselves when they are attacked by them. We also need to, to tell our children about the process of authentication. Because as it's very easy to come to anyone, even sometimes adults or, or older Muslims, to say, this is the Prophet said so and 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 so So it has turned out, and it's study now in, in, in graduate work, the, the, the process of authentication of hadith is the most accurate authentication process for any kind of literature that happened throughout the history of mankind. Mm -hmm. And, and whatever they say, the Prophet said that, it's true. I mean, one of the simple things is Hadith Mutawatir. What's Hadith Mutawatir? I mean, most of the Muslims, the, even the adults, they don't know that. But we need to give them that the idea, that the, the general idea, we need to give our kids the general idea that this was scientifically authenticated beyond that. The Prophet did say that. And their evidence, and if you are willing, if you are open to study the ilm of hadith, they teach it to you. But it's, a, it's like a year long study. Because this is how complicated it is. An example of hadith mutawakir is like when somebody, after like 100 years after Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi died, this is when they started to collect the hadith a little before that. Somebody comes from Morocco, and somebody comes from uh, Lebanon, and some come, somebody comes from Yemen, and you ask them about the hadith, and they all say the same thing, the exact same thing, and these three people have never met in their life. It must be how it is. I mean, it's just an example, but the ways hadith were authenticated by the Book of Sahah, Imam Muslim, Imam Bukhari, Imam al Dawood, Imam al Tirmidhi, and on all those of Fajr and Hamra, you all have a lot of people. They did the work. And it was hard, but they did it. And they spent their life, their entire life, some of them abandoned the family, the God, the Holy Day, the God, and made sure. No one is going to come to one of our children and tell her that this hadith is not Sahih one is Sahih. They sacrifice their entire life so no one will say that. Stand up for the same class. Stand up for it because it's Sahih and it's Sahih. Hey, he's it. The least Sahih hadith is more authenticated than the most authenticated verse in the Bible. And I say that in in, in Place where they're heard of this talking about this Christian Jews, they call it. Mm -hmm. Yes. They said that they didn't have to tell them that. <clears throat> and it's true. 
because the, the, the Torah and the, the Injil, they went through errors that was nobody observing, nobody was looking, no one was projecting. And there was so much corruption amongst the, 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 the religious leadership that people offered verses for their own interests. It's true. It's actually being studied now. <clears throat> now that we have these liberal schools that are allowed to, to, to say these things about to go to any uh church and tell them who you he wants to tell them to tell you that the, the school of Christianity at Harvard. Because the school of Christianity at Harvard are the ones who are coming up with all these things. But the, the there's a big research that came out a couple of years ago that it is the, the, the Christian people did the study and make it easy. Paper. He said, it's the most contradictory book in the history of my life that contradicts itself in a very obvious way that any five, fifth grade student can notice. <clears throat> the contradiction. It used to be the wonderful rock of God. It used to be a reformation of, of being good. Not called them the people of the The very thing they had. But they offered it. There are Entire chapters that were wiped away, and there are entire chapters that added on that was not part of it. And in the middle, there are things that are played with them. And they come and they tell us how we know that this Hadith is right. We have the guts to talk about it. So we need to arm our children to strengthen for this information. We don't have to make those funny and no, we don't have to teach it that, but we tell them that this is there. And if you want to do it, it's a building. We need to teach it to our kids the the season of what it is. How you live in your life, what you trust. And how incredibly wonderful man you are. Because our kids are losing the, the, the person that they could look up, the, the, the role model. And we have Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who's more of a better role model than him. But we kids, we don't know what he did, how he lived. All they know about him now that he was married to nine women. And he carried the sword and he converted people under the threat of the of the <clears throat> where is he where is where is it says to our children where that he was the, the nicest man ever, the better manners man ever, man ever, the most generous man ever. The kind is first over. The one who cared about the, the loved ones than anyone has ever did to his family, or to his friends, or his neighbors. <clears throat> the Prophet وسلم, an Arab came to him a big way. And then he held it from his clothes. And he took him in front of all the companions while he was teaching in his sermon. He said, Give me of the spoil of the war I fought with you. It's not your mother's money. Literally, he said that to Prophet Jesus. Amr al Khattab, he came up with his story about to, to take off the guy's head. And, 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 and the Swara said, I'm not sick of wait. My brother here has all the right. So the Prophet of the Lord takes the man to his house. He says, Come here. And he opened the door of his house and he took the man in and he said, This is where I live, this is all I have. Take what you want and leave what you want. And the Prophet of the Lord had There were nights that the Prophet of the Lord would go home and look for something. 
and there was a, a great, a great, a great dinner. And that's his dinner. So the man is 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 a thing. And he said, my brother, have I been with you? And he said, I haven't seen anyone who has done a thing. I don't know if anyone who has done a thing. He was the prophet. Let us see. And he said, my friends outside of them said that they were going to be very, very complicated with the weather and concerned about the safety of the people. Would you come out and tell them the story? And he said, of course you can. So the prophet, the man came out and he said, you are the best man ever. And he said, 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 the best man ever. Tell him how wonderful the man was. After the man left, the Prophet said to his companion, Listen, the parable of me and this man and you is like a man who had a camel. And the camel slipped away and took its rope away, and he lost it, almost lost the camel. The camel got away, it was the road, but he can't catch it. So he went out chasing his camel. His friends saw that and he tried to help him. And they were surrounding the camel from every direction, trying to catch him. And that only made the camel more nervous and make him run faster and get farther away. So the guy said, Leave me alone with my camel. I know how to bring it in. So he took something from the ground, some humans, and waited for the camel. And the camel came. And started by the book and took the camel home. Said, I am the owner of the camel. The big one is the camel, and you are my friends trying to push him away and send him away and make him more angry than he did. So the, uh, the story is actually this really happened. And, and the, the point is the first time we tell the children that. We follow this man not because of the sword. We follow this man because he's worthy to follow. He's worthy to be the role model. There is no human being ever left this world that is more worthy to follow than Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this land. We have to be Follow him because we would love Because I think. So, let's give her a little Our status is and if we are very determined to deliver attention that is based on the ground of the enemy, I think you understand that determination that can stand for, for the public. It can defend itself against the attack and it can recognize the destruction of all. And that is a process and it takes time. It takes a lot of work. Probably to our country, it's not the process we should use it in the way we want. It's a completely clear way. It's a very good way. It's a very good way. It's going to take time to a better stuff. It's very, very hard.
giving us valuable time. What a question that I have, uh, Sheikh, is I want to circle back to the Dawa, but that's not community Dawa, it's individual Dawa. So I, I believe. So I'm talking about individual Dawa rather than community. I know you're reflecting on both things. So as far as individual Dawa, your character is so key. If the person tells you that you are a great person, I don't want to hang out with you. I enjoy every food you give me, but I don't want to hang out with you. Is this the default line? Is that where I should stop? Well, that's a very normal position. And if you don't say that, it works here. Star level, he will come to the next 
in a way that they can detect it. So if someone is trying to a scale wrong, it will be human animation. Are we going to produce 
Now we were on the largest global ban and we still are on the news and fear on it. But outside of the message, there's something else that's wrong. That's something we cannot help. Is what the heck? It's just not a good But but this also makes more responsibility on our part of watch for and don't get more how much we know. So it must be a smart This community, we have more than uh, one example, actually, many examples of youth leaders, but due to immaturity or just uh, you know being drawn emotionally to this way of life, but not really matured in that way of life. They were picked up for their confidence, like the best that you know, able to speak, able to deliver. But then eventually, when the kids are hanging out with them found out that there is no, you know, substance, there is no depth, and that depth comes with maturity. And that's why uh, I circle back to that thing that it does it. Are we losing that factor of maturity? Like the brother said, a sheikh who has practiced it, who has lived that life. We are leaving him aside and getting somebody that age who may not have lived that life and may fall and slip because of immaturity. How do I tell them to, to seek 
<clears throat> what, what I understand is that uh, if, if, if it's 12 years old and it's too big, what, what can we do, right? Yeah, because I mean, <clears throat> like, what do you mean by it's too late already? So, you know, we're not going to be able to give up on our kids, right? No. So, so what I'm asking is, like, how, how we should approach this problem from broader point. So what I meant by saying that is to urge uh, parents to start to do the rules of the study to teach the kids to read. But if they are already 12 and haven't started yet, or you have started but they, they haven't done the way you want yet, you don't stop. So you know. If it is late, it still we still have to do the work. We have no choice. We still have to give up. We are going to be more Okay. We still try. We still push. We do all what we can. Guys, and the uh, a mother in my back in my family, if you do something wrong a hundred times, it pushes for you a hundred times or more. You don't give up. You just keep up your rules and say you do the right thing or do that. That's how it's still it. it's <clears throat> so we look at these things and we give up. So in the compression of the food was a good life, so we split the times according to the function that the agenda is raised. In the heart of the uh, But if they have been over the age, most of the Sahaba here took it to the time when they were old. However, in the sense, this is a thing. In most of the warriors, we only take a few minutes. Amr of the Khatab, the Mullah, who wants to give the opinion, a sharp opinion, who can look at the answers of you. And ask him what to do. The Ali Bani Sala, if they ask him in his opinion, he said, What are we doing? He wants to do it. He wants to honor. He wants to honor. All these people who were young people are going to honor. Imam Shafi, who sat on the chair at the first question, and that told me the people are going to accept him with the soul. Imam Shafi was 12 when he started giving something. He said, So, uh, it is true that the, the early age is very crucial, but if we pass the time, we still don't go up. We try hard and hard, and then it's still a lot. It is not up to anybody to put you on the top, you up to a lot. So we push, we do all what we can, and we pray for them. We don't forget the Baha. Baha is very powerful, very powerful. It's very fun. It's like a lot of We thank him for the guests from Moss with the success of this film and these conditions as well. We are very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Love with the Lord, 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 with the